Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. It is set review time. Today we review Topps Gold Label, the newest set that has been released by Topps in the 2020 baseball card season. Now the question is, is are there rare finds or is this a set that we should maybe say never mind and pass on to the next one? Well, Stay tuned because the most in-depth set review that you will find anywhere on YouTube or the internet is coming right at you. It's time to review Topps Gold Label 2020. So it is finally here. It is the 2020 Tops Gold Label set release day, and we are going to do an in-depth dive to figure out how good this set really is. Now, how do we do that? We do that with the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. What is that, you ask? Well, that is a ranking where we divide if you will, the set into 10 different categories, all sorts of different categories like card quality, the autograph checklist, the parallel um, lineup, all sorts of different ones, 10 different categories. We give it a score of one to 10, 10 being the best. Then we add up each of those categories, which will give us our exclusive sensational set ranking, which allows us to see how good this set is overall and allows us to compare this to other sets that have been released in the 2020 card season. So how do we get to that one cent sensational set ranking? Well, First, we'll cover off on the set highlights. We'll cover off on the buying formats, dive into the key cards, show you what the different parallels, relics, and autos that you can pull in this set are. And then I will even show you what some teams are that you should be targeting in breaks. This is going to be a very popular break product. And then I will give you my opinions, like who should be collecting this, who should be staying away, what the set positives are, and what the negatives are. And that brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking, where we will tell you how good this set is overall. And then we'll show you how it compares to every other set that has been released in the 2020 baseball card season. So let's dive right in and go into the set highlights. First thing to know about Topps Gold Label, it is an elegant, multi-tiered set at an affordable price. That is the one sentence that sums up what Topps Gold Label is. It is in its ninth year of production. It's kind of gone off and on. It was first released in 1998, then in the early 2000s, had a few years, and then it went away for a long time, but it has been back since 2016. Now, there is a 100 player base set. However, within that 100 player base set, there are three different cards, each class one, class two, and class three. The rarity increases with each class level. So the base set would be considered class one, a short print set would be considered class two, and then although it's not really SSP, but a much more rare class three card is also available. Now the rainbow, the parallel rainbow is not nearly as big as it is in some other sets. However, for each class, there are four different colored rainbows in the parallel um, that you can pull. For each hobby box, there is one gold framed on card auto, and that is the big draw in Topps Gold Label. The set does feature rookies, it features stars, and it fe features retired greats. There are no prospects in the set. And interestingly enough, there are no inserts either. This is an exclusive product to hobby only. So if you are searching for this in retail, you are out of luck. This is only a hobby format set. And finally, they have released a new Golden Greats Auto Jumbo Relic card that is available for 2020. It's brand new for 2020. A very cool relic that you can pull in Top's Gold Label. We'll cover off on that a little bit more later. And don't forget, the one of one cards are actual real gold. So what are the different formats you can buy this in? Well, first, there it's only available in hobby. Uh, so two different ways you can buy this. You can buy it by the case, which is going to be 16 hobby boxes. Now there's seven packs per box. 
five cards per pack, which gives you 560 total cards. The current price on those is about $1,550. Cost per card, $2.77, but you are guaranteed to get 16 autos in 64 different base parallels. If $1,550 is a little too rich for your blood, you can always go in on the Hobby Box. You're going to get seven packs, five cards per pack, 35 total cards. going to cost you around $100. Bucks. Cost per card on that goes up a little bit to $2.83, but you are guaranteed to get one gold-framed auto and four base parallels. So what are the key cards in Topps Gold Label for 2020? Well, we'll first cover off on the base set. Now, keep in mind, I'm including the base set as Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3. The Class 3 is the most limited of the three different cards that you can pull out of the base set. So, first card going to be card number 51, Gavin Lux. That is a rookie card. We also have Luis Robert in here, card number 79. Kyle Lewis, who I believe will win the AL Rookie of the Year is in here at card number 87. And we also have Bo Bichette's rookie card at card number 95. Now, there are also parallels, autos, and inserts. So the ones that people are really going to be searching for, probably those Class 3 base set cards. They're, they fall about 1 in 20 packs, so you don't get too many of them per box. And then there's the framed autos. Now, what's neat about the framed autos, not a lot of fillers in the auto checklist this year. You can get Luis Robert. You can get Mike Trout, Acuna Jr., Jeter, plenty of other big names, retired stars, huge superstars, and rookies in that, in that auto checklist. And then there are also rare, but if you pull one, it's a great find, the dual autos. Some of the highlights of the dual autos, you've got a Juan Soto and Acuna Jr. dual auto, a Trout Griffey Jr. one, a Trout Acuna Jr., a Tatis Jr., and a Vlad Jr. Apparently, if your last name ends in Jr., your autos are really good. It seems that's the way it goes with baseball cards these days. Then there are also the Golden Greats autos. Now, these are going to be your retired Hall of Fame autos. Some key names there. You've got Hank Aaron, Griffey Jr., plenty of other big names as well. Then you've got the Golden Prospect Relics. Now, these are not prospect cards like you would find in Bowman. They are younger players, rookie cards. You've got Luis Robert. You've got uh, Gavin Lux. Tatis, those type of names that you will find in uh, those relics. Then you've also got the Golden Great Relics. All of those are going to be Hall of Fame relics. Some really, really neat cards. You can kind of see one there at the right with the jumbo uh, relic with the autograph. So what are the parallels? Well, in Class 1, you can get a black parallel. You're going to find those in one of two packs. Then you also have a blue uh, number to 150, a red to 75, and a gold one of one. Class 2, if you get a black parallel, it's going to be one out of six packs. So this is going to land maybe one, one, maybe to a box. Um, and then the blue goes down to 99. The red goes to 50. And the, of course, the gold is one of one. And the hardest ones to pull are going to be the class three parallels. Uh, the black going to fall one in 20 packs. That's about one in every three boxes. So you're not going to find too many of those. So if you get a black class three, very nice card. Uh, the blue class three going to be numbered to 50, red to 25, and of course a gold one of one. So not a huge rainbow, but with the three different tiers, kind of makes it a little bit challenging to collect. So what are the relics for gold label? Not too many of them. It's a very straightforward, simple set. Not too much to kind of take in here, uh, but you do get the gold prospect relics. There's going to be 18 cards in that subset, and they're all going to be numbered to 25 or less. And they do have parallels, a black to five and a gold one of one. Then you have the MLB Legends relics, which is what you see over there on the right. 40 cards in that set, each numbered to 50 or less. Parallels are black to five and gold one of one. And that is it for the relics, guys. Then we go to autographs. The most common autographed, obviously they fall one per box, are going to be the framed autographs. There's 65 different cards you can pull for the framed autographs, and they do have a four-color parallel rainbow of black, blue, red, and of course gold. It is gold label. And remember, the golds are actual gold, which is pretty awesome. 
Um, then you have the framed dual autographs. I have a small little typo there. I apologize. Um, those are going to be 14 cards in the set, and they are each numbered to 10. And then you have the parallels of black and gold as well. Those are going to be highly sought after, highly valuable cards. Then you also have the Golden Greats framed autographed jumbo relics, 22 cards in that subset. They're each numbered to 50 or less with a black and gold parallel as well. So easy, straightforward set, not a ton of inserts, not a ton of different autos, none of that stuff. Very straightforward. We're looking for gold. We're looking for autos. We're looking for relics. So when you're buying into the break team, to, uh, when you're buying into different breaks, what are the teams that you should be targeting? Well, as is usual with sets like Topps Gold Label and some of your more high-end sets um, that are hit-driven, the Yankees usually tend to be the best team, and that is no different for Topps Gold Label in 2020. They do have nine autos that you can pull. That is the most autos out of any team. There are seven different base cards, the most amount of base cards. Keep in mind, there's only 100 cards in the base set, but there are three different versions, so technically 21 different base cards. Um, and there are two relics that you can pull from the Yankees. So once again, the Yankees in a hit-driven set tend to be the best team, and that holds true for Topps Gold Label. If you're looking for rookies, rookies are not the big drive on this. There's plenty of rookies to be had. However, it is not a rookie driven set because of the amount of Hall of Famers and retired stars. So the Chicago Cubs actually have the most rookies. They're actually tied with the A's, but I feel like the Cubs are a better team to get in the break than the A's. So I'm going to list the Cubs here, but the Cubs do have five autos you can pull from, six base cards, two rookies, and they have one relic as well that you can pull. A solid choice, going to be the Atlanta Braves. You get four base cards, seven different autos that you can pull. And keep in mind, it's the Braves. So if you pull one of those autos, some of the names are really big in there. Thank Acuna. Um, and there are five different relics that you can also pull. So it's a very, very solid team. It's going to be a sought after team, probably be one of the top five uh, teams on eBay breaks where you're buying team specific. But if you hit them in a random team break, a very nice team, I recommend to hold the Braves. Um, however, the team with the most value, I always have trouble with this one, but I do think that it's the Chicago White Sox. There's a couple other teams that I considered, but the White Sox, look, they've got five base cards. One of them is a rookie. We all know who that rookie is. It's Robert. Fantastic rookie to pull. There are six different autos in the auto checklist. The names, think Frank Thomas, Eloy Jimenez, um, Joan Moncada. So lots of good autos that you can pull from the White Sox, and they do have one relic as well. So I do think that the White Sox, they might not be the most expensive team, but I do think from a value perspective, they are going to be the team that holds the most value in the long run, especially if Luis Robert... Um, or Robert, however you like to say it, pans out, um, going to be a real valuable team. But there's also a couple sleepers that you should consider. And my first one is going to be the Cincinnati Reds. There's only four base cards, which actually isn't bad in a 100-card set at all. You do get one rookie. Obviously, that's going to be Aquino. Um, but they do have six autos and three relics. I don't believe that the Reds will be a highly sought after team, maybe not even in the top 10, but I do think if you're buying into a case, you can't really go wrong with the Reds. My other sleeper team is going to be the Philadelphia Phillies. Five base cards, eight different autos that you can pull, um, and this shouldn't say one insert, it should say one relic. Um, they also have one relic that is a Mike Schmidt relic. But with the eight different autos, I do think that you'll see Phillies autos show up more than people think. I don't think they'll be a top 10 team. Very nice autos in there as well. A lot of retired stars. You've got Bryce Harper, all sorts of different big names. So the Phillies are definitely another sleeper team that I would keep my eye on for break team targets. So the real question becomes, who really should be collecting Topps Gold Label? Well, first of all, I think PC collectors. Like, look, if you collect a player that is in this set, let's say Mike Trout, you've got three different Mike Trout cards that you can collect. 
and there's a manageable rainbow so if you think about it the rainbow is basically only four if you get the if you want to collect class one you've got the base plus the four um plus the four parallels if you wanted to collect class one class two class three so there's a little bit of a challenge but i think it's still manageable so if you collect any of the players that are in this set check out the checklist a really fun fun set to collect some of your pcs um and then i also think that if you're a big hit chaser but maybe have not been chasing big hits or work on a limited budget i'm going to call that the entry level big hit chaser look the boxes are affordable these are not thousand dollar boxes they're not seven hundred dollar boxes they're going for about a hundred bucks right now here in a few months that price may even come down you may be able to find some on sale um and i think that you've got a good chance at getting some really nice big hits um if you're a hall of fame collector there are tons of retired stars big names hall of fame collectors um seem to be coming out more and more in the hobby lately um plenty of big names here to be had so a fun set if you like the nostalgic feel and kind of the throwback and then case breakers if you are breaking cases of this look you've got 64 different parallels you're going to get in a case you've got 16 different autos so if you're breaking cases of this stuff should be a fun break should be fairly quick to get through um, and everyone will probably go home fairly happy or extremely happy if you get one of the big 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 hits um, and then obviously if you like gold uh, hey look you can find real gold in this set and even if you don't get lucky and hit one of the gold cards the gold foil cards are beautiful so if you really like gold foil on cards which is kind of a throwback to the late 90s or even or really 90s sets in general um really fun really fun set to collect here and i do think that for card design enthusiasts um you've got a really nice card design tops gold label does a good job with the dual photos um, and how they kind of mix in if it's class one class two class three uh, very clean design this year so if you really like a nice card design kind of an elegant feel a very nice set to collect but there's also reasons you should not be collecting gold label first if you're a retail collector if you are one of those people that is having trouble finding stuff out there in the wild um, well you're not going to find this at all it is a hobby only format not available in retail stores also if you like prospects there are zero prospects in this set so stay away from this set and if you like inserts there's no inserts in the set it is a very straightforward bare bones hit driven set um, it's all about the class one class two class three relics and autos that is it there are no inserts finally if you're a newer collector this is a little bit of a hard set to understand if you don't know what you're chasing so class one class two class three that's a little bit confusing so the tiered the multi-tiered uh scarcity and then also for a hundred dollar buy-in it's you know you, you're getting what 35 cards something like that um and so you really kind of got to know what you're chasing in this and you really kind of got to understand the 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 reasons to buy in and the reasons not to buy in so if you're a newer collector uh keep it simple this is a simple set in regards to what is offered however the difference between a class one card and a class three card means an awful lot to other collectors if you're looking to flip so maybe a set that you want to watch a few breaks before you buy into it if you're a newer collector then finally flippers um outside of the big hits which there will be plenty to be had um, but there is not a huge demand on the secondary market for tops gold label so if you're looking to flip like a class two card the class two card probably not going to be worth much more than the class one this is still a hit driven set an affordable hit driven set which is nice but for flippers i think there's better options if you're just looking for a big hit to make a lot of money off of um and that's your prerogative i guess um so what are the overall positives in my opinion well first of all i actually like that it's a straightforward set it's got very little uh frills there's not a lot of filler in this set it's called hey if you like gold if you like gold foil you're gonna like this set you get one auto it's gold framed it's very elegant it's 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 very nice it, there's there's not a lot to really kind of dig into here 
Um, they are beautiful cards. It's got a very elegant flavor to them. Gold tends to do that. Um, and then I also did think it's a great introduction set into the premium card market. And here's what I mean by that. If you're someone that is looking to get a little bit bigger hits that maybe you're not finding in, you know, some say Don Russ or archives or something like that, this is an affordable box. Um, I don't think it's too much of an investment to go try and chase a big hit here and there. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you get lucky and you hit that card that's worth a few hundred bucks at, at, or maybe even more out of a out of one box of tops gold level it's it's the investment isn't that big um which really kind of helps introduce you into what it's like to do some big hit chasing um i also like the new golden greats relics and autos i think it boosts the product's diversity over what was uh, over the 2019 product so a very nice addition um to the set and then the checklist, because there is only 100 cards. But even when you look at the auto checklist, there's very little filler. Now, in some of the gold frame ones, there's a couple that you might say, eh, for $100, wish I might have got a better auto. But for the most part, if you watch a few of these boxes get opened, I think you're going to see some real nice autos come out. And the base set checklist is a very, very solid checklist. They did a good job on saying, let's just get the stars on teams. Again, like I mentioned before, it's also kind of an affordable price for what you're getting. I get there's only one auto, but you are going to get plenty of parallels in the box, and it is a little bit more of a premium card. Um, so I think overall, this set has not inflated too much. I still think it's pretty affordable. You can get it for under 100 bucks for a hobby box, which these days is a very affordable, um, especially for a semi-premium set like Topps Gold Label. And then finally, it's a hobby only format, which lowers the production run, which will help card values in the long run. Now for some of the negatives. I do think that because there's still no inserts, it's going to make for very predictable pack openings, which will hurt a break a little bit. So chances are you're going to see pack one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven be, oh, well, that's the one with the auto. They're not, it's the inserts kind of, you're going to very much know after watching a few breaks of this, um, with where the auto is coming in and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of a predictable pack opening. And the other thing is they in, they did introduce the Golden Greats relics, but other than that, it's basically the same set as last year. So not a ton of innovation. I do like the new relic, but there's just not much new that they introduced. Um, and although I do think it's a very beautifully designed card, uh, if you go look at 2019, 2018, the design for Topps Gold Label, it's great design, but they have not changed it much at all. It is if you if i showed you a 2018 and a 2020 and didn't tell you which years you might not know the difference between the two cards so not a lot of innovation there either um and also the cost per auto is a bit high you get one auto per box if the box is going for about 100 bucks right now um so that's a little bit high you can find autos you can find more autos like for example with uh, uh chronicles right now you can get three autos in a box for 139 so the autos are about what um, $45 in a box like that. So cost per auto a little bit high, but it is a gold frame one. So that's a little bit of not a fair one-to-one -one comparison there. Also, I think the parallel rainbow feels a little bit like it should be expanded. Um, I get that it's not Bowman or Chrome or something like that, and it should not have a 20 color parallel rainbow, but maybe adding six, uh, colors wouldn't be a bad idea overall. So the other thing that I would say is a negative is the secondary market appeal for the less desirable cards is soft. When you look at the what these cards go for historically on eBay, the big hits are going to draw good uh, good value. However, a lot of these other cards that you're going to pull out of there, the class one cards, not going to pull much more than an average card from any other set. So a little bit soft on the secondary market, not as much demand as there may be for some of the bigger products that come out in the year, the flagship products, um, things like Topps Chrome tops uh the flagship series one series two update those those have a lot more appeal so a little bit soft on the secondary market so 
That brings us to the one cent sensational set rating. How does Topps Gold Label stack up in 2020? Well, we're going to break it down into 10 different categories, as I mentioned at the top of this video. We've got appeal, base checklist inserts, parallels variations, auto checklist, pack odds production, card quality, historical value, artistic value, and cost value. So when we look at Topps Gold Label, uh, first of all, the appeal, I give it a 7.5. I do think that with the hit chasing that goes on in the hobby today, that there's plenty of people that are going to be looking at Topps Gold Label. Plus, it's been around for a few years, um, and it has a little bit of, of heritage in the hobby. So I'll give it a 7.5. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a little high there, but overall, I think people do like Topps Gold Label. For the base checklist, I'm going to go ahead and give it a seven. Um, I feel like they could expand it a little bit. They did a good job of putting the stars of each of the teams on there. There's some teams that feel a little bit light, but for the most part, a fairly decent checklist. Um, better than average, I think. Um, inserts. Now, a lot of people would say, well, they have no inserts, so you should give it a three or, or you should give it a zero. I went ahead and gave inserts a three, and here's why. You have some new subsets that are relics that got put in there and i know that i'm making a stretch there a little bit there are no pure inserts in this set but there are some inserted relics so for sake of giving it a number i gave it a three i would love to see a gold label relic i think you could do some very neat things um, in regards to gold prospecting um, and all this other stuff that you could do around gold that they, uh, you know, golden finds, stuff like that. I, I feel like they're missing the boat there a little bit. So I give it a knock. I'm giving it a three. Um, in regards to the parallels and variations, there are no variations, but the parallels, I am going to give a 7.5. The reason for that, um, I feel like the rainbow could be a little bit expanded, but I do love the tiered class one, class two, and class three. So those are kind of your variations, kind of a neat way to set a set, a two, to do a set. So you've got three different Mike Trout cards, each class one, each class two, or any other star for that matter but three different cards of a big major league stars and then parallels on top of that. So it's kind of a neat way to do that. The auto checklist, I went ahead and gave a seven. A um, little bit of filler in the gold framed autos, but some of the retired autos are fantastic. Beautiful cards overall. So a seven feels about right. For the pack odds and production, hey, look, this is not a, it, it, it does get a lot of production. However, it is a hit driven set. Um, so you're not talking about a huge production run. Uh, the pack odds are going to be pretty good, especially if you're looking into like a whole case that you're going to hit some big cards throughout the case. So we'll go ahead and give that a seven card quality. Look, they've, some have gold. Some of the base cards, I feel like they could do a little bit better on the card quality, but overall very nice cards. Going to go ahead and give that a seven as well for the historical value. I give it a little bit of a knock. Um, and I'm going to say that it is a six. The base cards are not worth much more than any other set that's been released in 2020. However, there are some big hits that you can pull out of here. Um, and for the cost of $100, you know, that's not too much of a gamble. So I think for historical value, based upon the whole set, you go ahead and give it a six. It's worth a little bit more, but not too much. Artistic value, I give it a seven. I would love to go higher. I do think it's a beautiful design. I just don't think that they've innovated it enough that it war from 2018, 2019, that it warrants a higher number than a seven in 2020. And then overall, the cost value, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6.5. Cost per auto, a little bit high. Would love to see the cost for boxes to come down just a little bit in 2020. I feel like they're kind of headed that direction, which is which is a good thing for the hobby. However, some big hits in there um, still. Um, some really fun cards that you can hit. Some very nice retired stars. So that is going to get a 6.5. So here's how we do the one cent sensational set ranking. We're going to add all these scores up and we're going to get a score somewhere between zero and a hundred. And then we take that down into a five star ranking system. So if you score a one star, obviously a set you want to stay away from a two star, 
if there's a reason why you're collecting it, there probably is. But for most collectors, it would be a stay away. Um, a three star set is a very standard set. Very much a set that you would look into if there's certain things that appeal to you in it. A four star set is a set that most collectors are going to be very interested in. Uh, very solid set. Um, a lot of sets that have ranked high on our system are four star sets. And then a five star set would be a set that is just out of this world awesome. We have yet to have one of those in 2020. We've had one that is close, but we have yet to have a five star set in 2020. We'll see if we get one. Um, so how does 2020 Tops Gold Label stack up on the one cent sensational set ranking? Well, the final rating is a 65.5. So it comes in at a low end four star set. So very much a set that people should be interested in. I think the gold appeal, the no frill, the no frills approach to the set is a fantastic um, change um, and kind of refreshing for a lot of sets in 2020. You kind of know what you're getting when you buy into it. It's a nice introduction into the premium market. And for a lot of collectors who are new, newer to the hobby that have kind of progressed over the last year or two, this very much feels like a set that kind of works for you. You're not quite ready to go buy that, you know, $1,500, the $1,000 set, but you would like to maybe chase some big, some big hits and you've got a little bit of a budget to do so. This is a great set for you. Um, beautiful card design. A great great um, auto checklist so overall a very nice set don't like the fact that there's no inserts it may uh, be a tad bit expensive but overall I think tops gold label kind of really brought it with their checklist in 2020 so I give it a one cent sensational set ranking of 65.5 now how does that line up for the rest of the sets that have come out in 2020. I think we are approaching 40 sets that have come out. Well, it is ranked 16th out of, I said almost 40, out of 53 sets that have been released in 2020. So 16 out of 53, it is, one, it is well within the upper third of the sets that have been released. It did not crack our top 10. So our top 10 stays the same. We've got Bowman Baseball still ruling the day with a sensational set ranking of 82. Tops Chrome at 76. Bowman Chrome at 76 as well. Um, and then you can kind of see as we come down in here. But Tops Gold Label, a fantastic set, guys. If you are looking to get a very clean looking card, um, a very elegant looking card, um, some big names, retired stars, rookies, and some of the biggest names in the uh, in the in the game today, as well as some very nice autos. And, an, I, and a decent chance at some really, really nice hits. I think Topps Gold Label will be a great set for you. So, if you haven't done so already, please throw over to first, hit that like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because we do do these sets, uh, these set reviews regularly. And leave a comment below. Let me know if you were buying into Gold Label. Let me know what you are chasing or if you were staying away from this set overall. Um, and with that, guys... I appreciate you watching this set review for Topps Gold Label. I wish you good luck on all of your personal pack rips for Gold Label. And as always, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.